of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we hope that you've been enjoying our lessons. And we want to say thank you for those who are joining us for the first time. So, um, today we are having uh, lesson 8, Planning for Success. And um, in this lesson 8, Planning for Success, we are going to look at um, what we are supposed to do before you seek for your success and how you see what success is and um, the benefits of or how you behave in your workplaces and what you do in your early years. This is uh, what we are going to look at uh, in this lesson. And today here I have my brother Daniel. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you as well. Um, so, before we continue with our, our lesson, um, I'm going to seek the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious, kind and loving Savior, who dwells up on the most high, Father God, we want to say thank you for being with us and for protecting us throughout all the lessons of IT. May you please bless the people out there who really want to follow your way, and may you please continue. Um, guiding us and protecting us and may your Holy Spirit continue abiding with us. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. So, planning for success. This is our lesson today. So, Brother Daniel, what do you think? What is success? So success. Uh, success has got a lot of uh, definition according to Anyone can define success according to the way or she understands. But um, for me, I would say success is achieving what you, the aim that you've made. When once you achieve that goal, that becomes success to you. You might be in school. At the end of the day, you want to get six points. You want to get eight points. That's your goal that you've made. When you achieve that goal, that is that's success to you. Yeah, that's what I would say about success. Thank you very much. So. That's what success is. So success, it varies with how you would uh, explain what it is. So we have two scenarios of um, Joseph. We know the story of Joseph. Joseph was um, was imprisoned, and then after him, after uh, imprisonment, he finds himself at a higher position. To him, that was success. Yeah. Uh, let us see another person who is um, John the Baptist. He also finds himself in the same situation, but for him, it went in, uh, it ended in a different way. So, um, for John the Baptist, he was imprisoned, and then later on, he died. So, what's the difference here? Can we say um, John the Baptist attained success or it wasn't success for John the Baptist because he died after, afterwards? So it varies with how you explain what success is. So Actually, I feel uh, John the Baptist actually because uh, his, his aim or his goal for him to, was to prepare the way for Jesus Christ which preached the message to all the people that Jesus Christ is going to come. And when he came, his, his, his journey ended there. So that was his success. He succeeded in doing it. So he attained his goal to be a forerunner of the Messiah. Yeah, exactly. That's what that meant. So the question should be, did he manage? If yes, then he succeeded. So which means John the Baptist attained uh, success. Even if he never knew that Jesus Christ was um, was with he was with him within the ministry of him paving the, the way for the Messiah, he never knew anything. But he did what he was supposed to do. He did uh, his role. That was success. Now, planning for success. What are the things that we need to do? So the first things first. <clears throat> 
So, um, to your own perception, um, what do you do when you want to plan for the success, for the goal that you want to achieve? Um, I would first uh, make a draft of what I would want to do. Uh, you make a plan. Yes. Plan to say this is how I'm going to uh, succeed. If it's in school, you will make a timetable. Say well, this is how we will be starting for me to achieve what the, the goal that I've, I've, I've put in place. So you you, you plan first of all. Then uh, after you do that, you put God first. Uh, the Bible says the knowledge comes from Him. Without Him, we can't do anything. So yeah, we, first of all, you need to plan, and after planning, you will involve God. Yeah. Um. So. My brother here is saying you have to plan. So, and in your plan, you mentioned something very, very important: putting God first. Um, reading from the book of um, Colossians, chapter three, verse uh, twenty-three to uh, to twenty-four, it says, "Whatever you do, do it heartedly." As to the Lord and not to me, knowing that from the Lord you will receive reward of uh, inheritance, for you save the Lord. So doing it to the Lord, you will receive uh, reward of inheritance. But doing it for man, you won't receive anything because God is the one who gives man. So doing it for man is just worthless unless doing it for God who gives man. So the first things first, as you are planning, as my brother said here, um, we have to, you know, we, we are growing, you know youths, they grow. Um, at a certain point in time, they think of settling down. They want to have a family, but what is the first thing, first thing that, you, that we need to do? So, you know, um, when you go to, um, when you are seeking for marriage, probably they would try to ask you, what is it that you own in possession? Because you just can't go and settle with someone whom you don't know your destiny. So, actually, the story that is being told here. Yeah. It's a true example. For me, if you, uh, there's a saying that what comes, what goes around comes around. So if you, uh, it came for Jacob, and you know the story of Jacob. Uh, he had a brother Esau. Yeah. He proved his, he proved his father and deceived him to say he is Esau. So he proved them and deceived them. So it came back to him. I, uh, I'm sure you you know this story. It's a story of when he wanted to marry. He wanted to marry Rachel. And then the, the father said, uh, for you to marry uh, my daughter, you, you first need to wait for seven years. He worked for seven years, but again, the father said, I can't give you the, 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 the younger daughter, the younger daughter, well, the, the, older, the older daughter is still not married. Yeah. So first you need to wait another seven years. So uh, whatever we do, any, anything bad that happens in our lives, anything that we do to others, we should always remember that it also comes to us, just like it happened to Jacob. He cooked uh, his father, he cooked his elder brother by stealing his inheritance. That inheritance was meant for his brother Esau. So it came back to him. Uh, that's what I would say. So, to the story of Jacob. So, the first thing that Jacob um, did that we must pick from him, um, he made his, uh, the spiritual and financial commitment first to God. Because we also see that he, even if he was proved uh, at some point, but at least he managed to attain his success at the end. He was so, persistent. Yes. Yeah. He was persistent. So in whatever we do, we shouldn't be giving up. We shouldn't be, uh, we should be persistent with, um, with what we want to attain, not until we reach at the goal. So we have to make our spiritual and financial commitment to God. So, marriage, uh, for those who want to settle down, you know, yeah, I think it's going to be yeah. the, um, there is that, um, the, um, the pyramid of hierarchy, yeah, yeah. what you want to attain. 
So you have to, uh, to to make sure that you have the basic needs that you have, that you want. You can't go look for shelter while you are yeah. hungry. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Then you need social. Yeah. Friends at school, friends home. Even um, when you when you are done with um, attending with your goal, what you really want to, once you organize yourself, that's when you can think of um, getting, married. getting into marriage. Um, so, what is the blessing of work? So this this brings us to say we have to work. Yeah. So, what is uh, the blessing of work? What is the reward of work? What do you think? Uh, first of all, uh, say God blessed me. Even before God created the world, He uh, created the world. He everything in it, everything in water, every, anything underneath the water. That was work. He worked for seven days and then he rested on the seventh, seventh day. Even uh, the, 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 the garden that he created, there was work there. So we see that work be, uh, came um, right there before even sin came into, into this day. So Adam, um, why do we think God created him? Uh, he was, she was a helper. A helper. Yeah. Can you help someone when there is nothing? Which means um, Adam was assigned to do something. Of which was to look after the garden of Eden and do what is um, and to take care of everything that is um, that is in uh, in the garden. So um, working. Do we do we choose? What is it that you should work for? Work, work for? What is it that you should uh, consider as Christian way of working? Uh, you don't understand. Uh, I the question. Okay. We have so many different ways in which a person can work. Now, what is uh, the way that you can say, okay, this is the Christian way that I can accept, okay, here I can work. There are some um, workplaces, let me say, we are Adventists there. Yeah? Then you find a work which tells you to, which commands you to work. Um, Exceeding the day of rest, which is Sabbath. Yeah. Those are kind of ways that Christians should avoid. Because in as much as we want to wait still, we have to consider that we have to be in the line of God. Yeah. And if we consider the first things first, of which putting everything into God's hands, and putting all the financial and spiritual commitment to God, we have to make sure that within our way, we are still in the line of God. Uh, in the line of God. Uh, here we say, here they say, um, even the land was cursed um, for the sake of man to live. So, what is it that we see that is changing? After casing the land, what changed? Um, God uh, made it difficult. Oh, okay, it was work, but it made it difficult for Adam. There, there was need for him to work hard in order to find food, in order for him to survive. He made the, the soil so hard that you're supposed to farm in order for him to find something to eat. So that is that was the case. So this simply tells us to say, if you are not working. You won't attain anything. Um, so, in the ending years, 
so, as we have seen, gold in Kenya for new months to wait. Um, in one capacity or another. So, uh, this part of our life, the working years, is usually about um, estimated to 40 years. For many people, this time when children are being brought up and educated, um, when the home, uh, yeah, so educated and when the home and other major purchases are acquired. So this is an estimated period of time, 40 years. We say we have to put everything together. So, what is it that parents should um, teach to our, you know, we're coming from homes where we're given something to do. Maybe early in the morning, you they say, um, wash your plates. Um, maybe after you're done with dishes, you, do, you just do all sorts of house chores. You put your line, um, teach your children how to work. Yeah, I think it's it, yeah. This is when the the verse comes in. I'm not sure the verse is probably to that. The, the verse that says, um, "Train up your child in the way you should go." That uh, when he grows up, he should he or she should not depart. So our parents have got a role in to play the game. They need to teach us the way that uh, we should we should go in line with what God wants us to do. This includes uh, teaching us on how to tithe, uh, teaching us on how to pray. In everything that we do, we should always depend on God. Yeah, so I think that's the role that our parents have. Yeah, so thank you. So there are some principles that uh, are put in to parents to help uh, to help in bringing up children in a Christian way, in the way of way, as we are organizing. Uh, ourselves and so putting more things together training our children what is it that we must consider what is it that we must uh, look into so the first thing is provide home uh, for children uh, provide uh, a Christian home environment for children how can we provide a Christian home for children that's the first thing what do you think uh, uh, we need to bring in uh, Jesus Christ in our homes uh, just like the Bible says, see the church. The church is not a beauty. The church is us, we the people. Yes. We can also make the church at home. Like every day, you, 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 you come up with some form of a timetable. See, this is the time of the praying, we are teaching the children about uh, the word of God so that they grow up in the way that should, they should be. So that's, uh, that's how we can um, uh, train up our children in a godly way. Yeah, so that is providing a Christian environment home. That is the first thing that we need to do. So teach children a willingness to work and an, appreciate, an appreciation for it. So that is the second point. So we need to teach our children to be willing to work and appreciate uh, that work. So children will discover the, that delicacy and integrity at work are always noticed and are appreciated and rewarded. Mm -hmm. So, um, an example of um, children at school. When they, when they learn that hard work uh, brings out reward, they even work more harder because of that yeah. reward. Drives them on getting it because yeah. they got it from home to say, Okay, if you do this, then um, a good thing will be given yeah. unto you, even if uh, that thing won't be given. But because of that reward, yeah, a child will be pleased with what that uh, with what he did or what they did. So, uh, the third point is. Help with their uh, education. Yeah, so helping children with education. So, first, the, the thing we need to understand is what education is. 
What is what what is education basically? Well, education is learning. It can be anything. Uh, you learn at home or not to cook, or not to do things. But when it comes to this form of education, it's going to school with books, you go with pens, you learn. Yeah, that's that's the basically education. So education starts from home actually. That's where the foundation starts from. So as we are building with our children, as we are learning, uh, as, as they are learning, so they start first learning from what they see from you. And then they develop an interest. Then you have to provide a good education for them. You notice, okay, my child likes music. And at the end, um, the child really feels good about what he does in music. What would you do? You basically just take the child to school of music so that that person may develop the talent that she or she has. Yeah. And at the end, it will reward that person. Um, even uh, if that um, child is good in Calculations, you take them to do maybe accounts or maths. Math, yeah. At the end, the, their talent won't just be in vain because you provided good education for them. You are providing an environment to work for them and they will um, attain uh, success. So, these are the plannings to success. Um, so, working with uh, integrity. What do we understand by the way it does integrity? Uh, from my own view uh, or my own perspective, I yeah. say integrity is being honest even when no one is watching you. In anything that you're doing, you, 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 you walk into your home, you find uh, there's, there's money at the table, you will you, you become honest. Honest even when no, when no one is watching you. Actually, there's a story uh, that is being told here of uh, Jacob. Uh, I think uh, you, you know it. Uh, when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph, Joseph uh, actually knew that even though there were just the two of them, God was watching. So he tried by his level best to become, to become honest in everything that he was doing. He, he refused uh, uh, what, what uh, Potiphar's wife wanted when she was seducing, when she was seducing him. So in everything that we do, we should always be honest, we should, we should always acknowledge that God is watching us. And uh, at the end of the, of the day, uh, Jacob's integrity uh, uh, attracted a lot of uh, positions for him. Actually, the Bible says even Potiphar was uh, blessed because of, 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 the, of, of Joseph, because of Joseph. Yeah. So, this is just simply to say from uh, 1 Corinthians, Chapter 10, verse uh, 31. And it says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of the God. This is just reflecting what my brother has just explained. Whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we, we, we dream, whatever that is that we do, we have to do it to the glory of God. If it's not unto the glory of God, which means you are not in the right path, just leave it. Uh, so, we say that uh, Jacob, uh, Joseph, so Joseph worked with integrity and the master was able to detect the integrity of Joseph. Yes, and at the end, he was able to be blessed and the whole nation at large. Not only him, but, but the whole nation. So, which means at your workplace, even you yourself, you can be uh, the workplace where you work from. Uh, the whole workplace can be blessed because of one person. So, it's anywhere, school. Yeah, even school. Okay. They say we have a study. Yeah. And I don't cheat on my friends and go home and read uh, what is legit, then I come and say different things to, to my fellow guys. Which means I'm not working with that integrity with my, with my fellow friends. 
what will happen at the end is that we will all uh, fail because even me, even if I was studying very hard, I won't have um, information which I was supposed to attend from my friends because initially we have different different views on one point. So when we work together, when you want to work with uh, integrity, which means a whole lot of us will attain success, and God will bless us because of um, one person. Amen. Um, so, <clears throat> seeking worldly counsel. Uh, this this lesson actually, uh, it, it, it reminds me of uh, these conferences that I've attended. That I've attended a lot of Vijayamuyashi conferences. I think you've heard of them. There was one that was held at uh, the old stadium. And I would, I, would, I would urge the viewers out there that you should be careful when you attend these kind of conferences. Uh, these motivational speakers, what they will do, they will, they will give you some information that actually contradicts to your Christian uh, Christian principles. For example, there's one motivational speaker uh, that says that for you to be successful, you need to do away with your Christian principles. For you, for, for the reason why you're, you're in poverty is because uh, you, 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 you give tight, because you go to church. So we should always be careful when you attend such conferences. Because then we will, uh, we will derail from what God actually wants. Oh, if you want to be financially successful, you want to do away with yeah. uh, Christian, uh, Christian, Christian principles such as putting tithe. Huh. So, those are very, very important things that we should be noting whenever we attend uh, councils. Actually, the Bible forbids us to follow. Uh, uh, human traditions. Whenever we, 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 we seek counsel from someone, we need to take note of what he or she is saying. Does it tell with what the Bible is saying? I think that way we'll move in the right direction. So, A lot of people have been deceived in this way. Yeah, yeah. So we must be, um, we have to remember the first step, which was the, the first step, uh, first thing to to put ourselves um, in our financial first to link it with um, good. So here we have uh, seven principles which are uh, which goal or which are uh, the Bible gives us that we should do. What is the counsel that God gave us? What is it? So. I think the first thing you mentioned it in the first place, of which is to get organized. Uh, so, getting organized, we find this in the book of Proverbs 27, verse 23 to 24. So, this is uh, simply getting organized is just simply planning. Planning, yeah. Planning your work. Uh, how, how much you're going to spend on something, not just for spin. That's why that's the that's reason why many of us find ourselves in debt. You just want to spend. Like, I, I have a friend who has, who has, who has a lot of shoes. Like, a lot, like, a lot of shoes like, they will, that will actually be enough to run his shoe set. <laughs> then, you, then you find that the, the same person, the, the same one who is complaining, say, money is difficult to find. You know, you, you actually it's because you've been overspending on relevant, relevant things. So this means when you plan, you always do the right thing. So, um, and as he said, we should avoid um, buying unnecessary. Just on prompt, you just find a, a good shade or something which you never planned, then you'll be like, no, actually this shirt matches with that uh, trousers which is home. Let me get it. If you haven't planned for that, leave it. Okay, so the second step, which is uh, found in the book of Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 8, is um, uh, Proverbs 15, verse 6, yeah? 16. 16, verse 16, yeah. Spend less than you earn. So this brings, back, this brings us back to the credit cards because um, in the modern world we now have credit cards. 
So you can be wondering, how can you be spending more than you earn? You earn a 10 quarter, but you want to spend 20 quarter. Well, well, yeah. So then, yeah. then, then bring in, bring, brings in the issue of debt. You start going to, to ask for, to, you start borrowing money from others so that you meet those uh, requirements that you want, those cravings that you want. So that, that's the reason why we should always be careful on how we spend money. So these credit cards, you just go to the bank and swipe without money in it because you know how this modern world is. Because it will just, you will just pay when you get paid. So it's more like they, they credit you with money. Yes, they yeah. credit you, you buy with no money. You don't, you don't even have money. You're even more now spending much than you earn. You earn. So the moment a salary comes in, they deduct. Yes. If, if it's not enough, they will, they will uh, brought, you they will remain in debt. So we have to do away with uh, spending more than what we have. So save a portion from um, from day to day. So we have to spend a portion from every pay period. Whenever we get something, we have to, uh, to at least save it. So this is coming from the book of Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 8. So oh. to the ant, O sluggards, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, one prepares her bread, is wise gathers her food in harvest. That's uh, Proverbs chapter six, six, six to eight. So, what is it that? Uh, why is it important to just uh, save the portion? Because there may be some uh, calamities, uh, things that we might not know that can come in the future. So you plan may, may be either accidents yeah. or, or illness. Imagine someone gets sick over a certain, maybe malaria, even COVID-19, then you don't have even a coin at home. So it's, it's good that you, you need to, uh, to save some money for future expenses. Yeah, so we have some natural, exp- uh, natural things that happen without you planning them to happen. So that portion that you are saving may help you to remain in your very same state because you will use it to clear out um, that gap which just suddenly happened. So we have to be saving at least a certain percentage of what you've planned to be saving. So the next point is avoid debt. Avoid debt. So this is by the Proverbs uh, 22, verse 7. So before you say anything, this is actually relatable with us, especially as teenagers. We, we may think debt is getting a loan, a bigger loan, worth 20000 Even what happens, you know, top 10, we always get this. That, that's debt at its, at its uh, smallest uh, portion. It's also debt. And the problem with that is that we, we don't normally want to bring uh, return that, that debt. You look for someone who is not dead, then you ask your, her or her to buy us, to buy for us. It's also dead. So there is this motivational speaker I once encountered with uh, on YouTube. This person just said, the problem with you guys is you want to be successful and you want to, be, you want to get rich using your own money. So what is that person trying to say? That person is just simply trying to say, no. At least get something from somewhere else, then invest. Invest in it. Yeah. Now, we know that entrepreneurs are risk takers. So anything can happen. And they didn't plan for such a thing. What will happen? That money that you've used to invest is not even yours. Which means you'll be what? You'll be in debt. And it will. You have challenges to um, make your successful plans. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So be diligent. Be a diligent worker. Uh, this is uh, coming from um, Proverbs uh, thirteen verse four. So it says, "The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing." But the soul of a diligent shall be uh, made rich. 
So that uh, is um, principle five. So the sixth principle is be financially faithful with God. So being faithful with our financials. This brings us to our time for the offerings. So this starts even from our workplaces. If we weren't faithful with uh, what we pay, or maybe during our closing time, we don't give out what we've sold, the exact amount, we are not faithful. How can we be faithful with God? So that's where it starts from. So we have and to. And it's, it's for our own good. Yeah. There's a verse in, uh, in Ephesians which says that uh, if we bring the tithe and go for it, we will be blessed such that we won't even have room to get to to, to keep all that all, all those blessings. So it's actually for our own good that we bring in uh, tithe and everything that we do. Yeah. So the last point, the seventh point is remember that this earth is not our home. Even if we are, whatever we are planning, we have to remember that this earth is not our home. So our management says that um, a lot about where or ultimate uh, priorities are. Um, whatever we prioritize, whatever we put in first, whatever we do, we have to remember that uh, we should uh, put God first and this earth is not ours. Um, so this is found in uh, Matthew 25, verse 14 to 21. So this is uh, what it is about uh, success. How we, so we've seen how we should be planning for success. So it, it starts first from defining success. Yeah, what you think success is to you. And linking it with uh, Put God, uh, putting God first and you want him to achieve the success and have a godly counsel and then follow the principles that are that has been given to us so um, so there is no scheme of a business or plan uh, that can be sound complete, that embrace only brief years of this present life and makes um, no provision for the um, unending future. So no man can lay up treasures in heaven without finding his life on earth, thereby enrich and um, ennobled. This is uh, the words of Ellen G. White. Uh, in the book of education page uh, 144, uh, 145. So this means that you cannot lay the treasures in heaven while you are from nothing in your head. So this means that we have to work and within our work we have to put God first and we have to be um, diligent workers. We have to work with integrity and then at the end we can lay our treasures in the end. Amen. Amen. So, this was our planning for success uh, lesson. Uh, thank you for being with us and thank you for joining us. And, uh, Brother Daniel, I thank you very much. Thank you as well. I hope thank to you. See you. Thank you, viewers, for viewing this YouTube channel. May God bless you. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much. So, before we close, uh, we're going to have a closing prayer from our brother. All right, let us pray. Our dear Father is above in heaven. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for making it possible to come to meet us again, to share about your way. We ask that may it impact the other person that is viewing this uh, channel. And may you bless the, uh, the, the person that was uh, listening to what we were sharing. May you help, uh, help us overcome the most temptations. Help us Lord, to uh, always remember that there is always a uh, God that will always uh, guide us in everything that we do. Uh, always, always remind us to bring the time to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.